Hi everyone, my name is Ralf Hack. I'm the CEO of Legilica and I'm going to talk about how to measure the impact of platform engineering. And basically we want to look into how can we measure what you're doing as a platform engineering team in your organization, how you can align it to the business, and then also how can you kind of promote and quantify the value that you bring to the business. So it's um, basically finding a good com connection between the activity. And I know platform engineering might be different from organization to organization, um, but seeing what's the return on investment there, how can you grow platform engineering on the organization and how you can you really, you know, translate the activity into something that the business can understand and the business can make investments in, in the future as well. So what we found talking to many organizations, platform engineering becomes successful if it fits nicely into a business strategy. Uh, the business strategy might be in your organization given through initiatives that are running this year, so your company OKRs, some KPIs that might be come down to your uh, division or outcomes that generally seen by the business as favorable. So if you can latch on to any of those and then provide reasons and argument why you actually have a positive impact and measure that impact on it, um, that's typically working quite successfully. So let me give you an example on that one. So let's assume your from the left here is the business strategy. That's let's say let's assume it's improving your operating margin by fifteen percent. Basically, you want to be more profitable. And then I've got drawn a little bit of a tree here how you might be able to align. And on the right hand is the platform engineering side with your business goals. So if you want to improve your operating margin, that means you either have to sell more or you have to save cost. And in both ways, you might be able to contribute to. Selling more might be able to do so by delivering faster. So if you improve your release frequency, deliver your or shorten your delivery lead time, or work on your dev cycle time and have less uh, interruptions in there, that might all be seen as favorable that you can sort of improve your, your speed and be able to deliver faster. And in the end, you help the organization to ship features more quickly, being able to react more agile to market demands and in such a way also be able to sell more. And if this is sort of some line that's important in your organization, you can get some buy-in. You can see how you can structure this from, from this path to the activity that you might be doing on the platform engineering side. Another way to look at this is saving costs. Um, that typically goes along with being able to improve efficiency. And efficiency, let's say, could be your infrastructure reliability, uh, things like uh, even your, your build system. If you improve the reliability of this and it's a repeatable, um, it doesn't fall over so much, it doesn't block people and it doesn't really increase uh, costs overly much with each run. That can be, for example, some initiative that you can run internally to reduce cost and improve efficiency. Other things might be process information, uh, automation. That could be, for example, having your testing or your AppSec running automatically as part of the CI, instead of having, let's say, manual processes uh, and a lot of uh, on-demand uh, uh, <coughs> triggering that must be done manually. Um, other things is looking at your infrastructure cost, um, your cloud cost, and then in this area, let's say the FinOps space, where you can say, okay, we are able to you know, automate, become more efficient, reuse components and all these things uh, to reduce cost overall. So this is just one way sort of how we recommend typically to structure it. Obviously, you know best what you're doing on the platform engineering side, what you see is most important, but then thinking up how you can align it to the business has proven to be quite helpful to get the buy-in and to also measure then the impact. Obviously, these are not the only areas. Um, what we've seen, there's a, there's a number of areas that are typically quite well accepted across organizations where to latch on. Um, one of them might be value delivery. So how much can you show that you improve the value of what the company is delivering? And that might be coming from collecting customer metrics or improving product quality leading to less bug tickets or having higher efficiency in terms of 
um, how you get to, to market, as I already said, talking about the lead time, cycle times, velocity, and so on. And then I think another important aspect is uh, in terms of quality and security. Are you able to ship high quality code? And can you show that over time your security incidents or bug tickets go down? Because maybe you now introduced automated processes as part of your CI. So these types of issues don't come and reach the customer. And other things is um, lastly about you know, employee happiness, DevEx, employee retention and churn. If you have ways to you know, show that by introducing the platform engineering activities, you actually reduce um, you know, the churn in the company, devs are more happy, and you can measure some sentiment around this. That's always a very you know, useful and very powerful activity to do. So by choosing some of these core pillars and being able to align your platform engineering technical and engineering activity to sort of business outcomes, this is typically for us what we see is quite powerful to really deliver good outcomes and you know, grow the organization, the, the engineering organization as well. Now, you can do the way I said it right now, and you kind of define your own numbers, your own metrics, um, your own, you know, dimension that you want to, you know, provide feedback on and report on, or you go and slot with a couple of uh, common frameworks out there. Obviously, something most of you might have heard about is like Dora Space. Dora focusing a little bit more on sort of the infrastructure, delivery, repeatability, mean time to recovery, and these types of things. Space framework takes a little bit more, I would say, the, the developer experience and the sentiment into account. It has got a much more, let's say, multi-dimensional approach. And there are other approaches out there. Some of them, you know, they're promoted by, by large enterprises or analyst companies such as Gartner or Forrester. <clears throat> and, you know, this is things that the management typically has heard about in one way or the other. An example is, for example, is a flow framework that comes out of the value stream management space that really looks into the whole organizational efficiency, let's say, from, uh, from your pre-sales to sales marketing, engineering, then support, and how, how do this everything flows through in delivering and making the customer happy. So there are different frameworks around there. Um, you might want to Google a little bit around and see if there's something that you know fits into your space to latch on on already. The good thing is kind of it comes packaged up and you know, it's, it's easy to Google by stakeholders as well and make it a bit more credible. So once you've got decided on you know some of those metrics or some of those frameworks you'd like to track, um, it's quite important we believe to be transparent to show ongoing what's the impact is, and also to report in a manner that people who really care about, who provide the, um, the money, basically, can see what they get for, uh, in return. So anything that you can do in automate reporting, tracking numbers, having some key metrics, and these might be proxy metrics, you know, you say, we measure, let's say, our release uh, frequency or our velocity. And that's kind of the proxy metrics for, you know, cost, uh, for, for how quickly we can deliver. And this is how much more you probably can sell if you want to adjust features and so on and so forth. As long as you have got the buy-in, that's probably a good way to show. Um, other things is tracking, which is quite common, you know, your, your bugs and incidents and saying, okay, this one is going down now since we introduced the, let's say, phase two of our platform engineering initiative. And again, that's sort of something that's, that's really valuable to feedback in almost real time and also create trust into the activities that you're currently performing. So once you have got these basic steps in place, there's obviously a bit of a journey. So in the beginning, you won't have everything for every metric. So some of them you might be able to support easier, some of them harder to support. Um, you, you will find some of them you don't get the buy-in that you thought you get, but the others that, uh, get more interest. And the more you can show and visualize and you know have, have a, like a, some kind of dashboard that you can present to stakeholders, the more you will get that feedback and the more visibility I think you will receive and get in the organization as well. 
Um, with that one, talking about journeying. So initially, I think it's really just about measuring, see where you are, maybe defining some goals where you want to be. And the next step then is really around improving. So what, what do we want to improve and what kind of outcomes do we want to drive? And this might be not even more the initial OKRs that we are going after once the discussion is rolling. Um, so there might be others coming in, but as long as you have got this feedback cycle to those uh, stakeholders that are really interested in making this succeed or want to see why they need to grow their platform engineering side or why this is useful, that's, I think, uh, quite important to know. And once you have got the, the measurement in place, you know you have got some improvement goals and some improvement cycles. And once you do this over a number of quarters and some time, you actually be able to predict out how you might be performing in, let's say, another six months time. Because now you get a trajectory of data and then it becomes less important where we are now, but sort of the reliability about getting to the next stage as an organization where we'd like to get to. So using that data to firstly to justify the value that you bring to it and the impact, but then also what it could be and creating some fantasy and on that fantasy in terms of positive um, expectation of what could happen if, let's say, if we double the platform team, if we re-architect something, um, <clears throat> if we bring in different teams, work more cross silo and really make their platform approach work. So that's quite important. In the end, the question is what success? Um, I already alluded here a little bit to it. One, if you have a strong discussion about platform engineering and hopefully a positive discussion going on, that's for us already, I would say, a, a big step towards success. But obviously, I mean, the other bit to look at this, just a second. Um, um, is once you become like the pilot, um, the, the business becomes the pilot and you are driving um, the, or you're providing everything to fly it. Basically, because like a cockpit uh, in your organization, you provide the instrument cluster, you provide the engineering capabilities and you provide the visibilities. And then it really becomes indispensable to make engineering and in the end also business decisions. And I think we've seen that's, a, that's quite powerful. Um, that's really where the discussion goes to a next level, where it's not so much about, you know, simple numbers, but, you know, how can we, how can we grow this and how can we make this even more successful? And I think that's, uh, that's sort of a little bit the end goal to get to. So I hope that helps a bit understanding about thinking about alignment from the engineering side, from the infrastructure side, down uh, all the way up to, to the business, um, creating that path, um, creating some kind of agreed numbers, using some proxy metrics to communicate this and then have that live communication back to stakeholders to get that buy-in. So I think that help, uh, hopefully helps a bit. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, there's my contact details and looking forward to uh, talking to you further on PlatformCom. Thank you very much.